Welcome to Mudfest, where we pick the best SUVs, crossovers, and pickup trucks. You know it's a very good event because we have wristbands. To truly understand how vehicles rank, limits need to be pushed. <laughs> Same with buttons, though those seem to be going away. The Northwest Outdoor Activity Vehicle of the Year competition, or as we affectionately call it, Mudfest, is a two-day competition to find the best SUVs, crossovers, and pickups. And it's especially important these days, since these are the kind of vehicles that people are buying. We've rounded up some of the latest models, like Hyundai Tucson and Santa Cruz, Genesis GV70, and the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L, and the very large Wagoneer. One of the benefits to Mudfest is you get to drive all of these vehicles back to back, so everything is fresh in your mind. This is the new Jeep Wagoneer, and uh, it's pretty big. Remember when Jeeps used to be basic vehicles? This one's pretty fancy. And it's not even the Grand Wagoneer. Defending champ Kia Telluride is back. Held at the Ridge Motorsports Park near Shelton, Washington, it's one of the best events in the U.S. for assessing these rigs. There's even a custom off-road test track. This is the 26th Mudfest. It's very well established, very well run. One of my favorite events didn't happen last year because of the pandemic. Let's start with something different, some winners. Starting with the compact and subcompact utility vehicle segment, it's the 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime Plug-in Hybrid. In the midsize and full-size family vehicle segment, it's the 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392. The compact and midsize luxury category, the 2022 Genesis GV70 All-Wheel Drive Sport Prestige. Extreme capability, the 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392. When it comes to full-size luxury, it's the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer Series 2 4x4. And pick up a bit of an upset, the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Limited all-wheel drive. There is an overall winner. I'm going to be saving that for later. And one thing that is very important, if you don't see your favorite SUV crossover or truck here, it's because the manufacturer decided not to bring it, okay? Here's how Mudfest works. Organized by the Northwest Automotive Press Association, it's not a manufacturer's event, but reps are on hand to answer questions. Wonder why the uber-capable Bronco, Wrangler, and TRX don't clean up on every award? Well, it's not only about off-road prowess. Balance is critical because the best of these vehicles need to work well in multiple situations. We're looking at everything from unique features that the vehicles have, value and how good the interiors look and work, plus the powertrains and drive technologies. So we actually move the alternator really high up to get it out of any sort of water if you go through. There are a lot of nuances. Scoring is equally weighted when it comes to on-road dynamics and off-road. And being a celebrity doesn't count, just ask uh, Kermit the Frog. Welcome to Mudfest. You do have Monroney's for all of the vehicles in the back. This year, there are 18 automotive riders driving 19 different vehicles. That's down from 2019 because the pandemic has made things tricky. For example, Nissan Frontier and Pathfinder didn't make it because the rep bringing them couldn't travel. So it's up to you to put those on the test drive list. Day one is all about on-road and checking out all the usable features. All right, you can go. Okay. To get an idea of the handling and acceleration, we take on the go-kart course at the Ridge Motorsports Park. If I ever get rich, I want to build something like this alongside my mansion. All right, this is the CX-30 and it has the turbo motor. So lots of power and it's the sports car of the group. It is just a joy to chuck into corners. Very predictable, very easy to drive. I like this car. Also, the Santa Cruz has excellent dynamics and it's very comfortable. There's a good section where we can check out acceleration and torque curves. 
There's a new rivalry this year, Ford Bronco and Jeep Wrangler. Certainly Wrangler 392 with its baritone V8 wins the sound contest. There's a lot of talk about the off-road rivalry between Wrangler and Bronco, but here's the thing, Bronco is really easy to drive on road. No micro corrections, handles pretty well, even when you throw it into a corner a little too fast. Uh, you know, these things make a difference because you are gonna be driving most of your miles on road, right? You gotta get to the trailhead somehow. New to Mudfest is the Genesis brand with the GV70. This is my first time in a Genesis GV70 and gotta say, just looking around, driving it for 30 seconds. Oof, look out Lexus RX, this is a nice rig. It has an excellent balance of handling and comfort. Built on the same architecture as the G70 sports sedan, off-roading might keep it from being the overall winner. Even within the respective categories, there can be huge differences between these vehicles. This is the Kia Sorento. I feel that its closest competitor here at Mudfest is the Subaru Outback. Two things about the Kia, it's got a beautiful interior and has a third row, unlike the Outback. Uh, it is kind of small. You don't want to put tall people back there, but it's there for an emergency. It's why it's important to test drive. Even if you've done your research, I can show you all of these vehicles, but only you know which is right for your unique wants and needs. Is there anything more perverse than driving a Ram TRX on a go-kart course? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's perverse and lots of fun. Can't believe I'm catching up to that Sorrento up there. One thing, the Ram is large and wow, can be a chore to maneuver in tight spaces. The cart course really amplifies pluses and minuses. The stability control of Cadillac's Escalade came on early and often, keeping us from fully experiencing its sophisticated air suspension with magnetic ride control. The dynamics of Honda Ridgeline Sport's unibody architecture shine when pushed hard. The super handling all-wheel drive advantage of Acura's MDX A-Spec is much easier to discern when hustling out of a hot corner than on a suburban street. Hyundai Tucson is another strong competitor here at Mudfest. It handles well for a crossover and has lots of great features, good value, and is just the right size. It's one of those cars I recommend to a lot of people. The Caddy is the priciest machine here at 113 grand. That would buy three fully loaded Hyundai Tucson Limiteds. The Toyota RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrids win might be due to efficiency with an all-electric range of 42 miles. On gas only, it gets 38 miles to the gallon. Kia Sorento and Subaru Outback Wilderness both average 24 mpg. So that's day one. Day two is all about off-road capability. We learned long ago to do it in this order because everything gets really dirty outside and in. Now, we might call it Mudfest, but it's been years since we've had any meaningful amount of the squishy stuff. Uh, maybe rename it Dustfest? There are multiple off-road sections since a Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro needs more of a challenge than the Volkswagen Atlas Sport Cross, right? The more mainstream vehicles like it, the Mercedes-Benz GLB 250, and Santa Cruz that functions like a pickup but is classified by the EPA as an SUV crossover have no issues taking on terrain that most owners would probably never push their own personal vehicles onto. MDX is known for its great on-road performance. It's almost like a sports sedan, but the thing is, Almost all of these will do light off-roading without any problem whatsoever. You don't need a Jeep Wrangler. It's going through the mogul field without any issues whatsoever. Okay, ground clearance might be an issue. I was going too fast for conditions. One of the big surprises was the Genesis. Its rear differential can send all power to the wheel with the most traction. And yeah, it doesn't have lofty ground clearance either, 
but it scampered through the easier course without much of an issue. And really, as you can see, the less challenging section has some tough stuff to cover. I really wish that Jeep would have brought the Wrangler 4xe plug-in hybrid, which means the RAV4 Prime has an advantage that no other competitor has. The great thing about electrification is that all you hear is nature and some of the sounds that the tires are making. You might say, electrification rocks. There's a spur off the regular section that more capable machines can take. Now let's be clear, this does not reproduce technical sections of the Rubicon Trail, but it does simulate tougher conditions and lets us check out approach and departure angles, hill descent control, and water fording. Uh, usually it's deeper this part kept draining away. This is the Subaru Outback Wilderness. Wilderness means it's a little bit more capable off-road with about an inch more ground clearance some more protection underneath, and X mode is different. It's more off-road capable. This is a real contender. It has no problem getting through any of this. The mogul section is especially enlightening. Not all four-wheel drive systems handle it the same. Do I even need to point out that the hardcore off-road machines shrug it off without any drama at all? The more mainstream models have various issues. Uh, this, this, this doesn't really like the moguls. All of these dynamics are noted in our logbooks. At the end of the day, each one of these rigs will have navigated the course some 20 times. The fact that none of them experienced any real damage says something about what they can do. There's a third section reserved for the most capable machines. It has very steep grades and nasty, loose, powdery dirt. I'm convinced the electric line paint on the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro makes it extra good off-road. Also helpful is the crawl control setting. What you're seeing and hearing is the system modulating throttle and brakes so drivers can focus on navigating the terrain ahead. It can take on the steepest sections of the course up and down with feet completely off the pedals. The V8-powered Jeep Wrangler 392 doesn't break a sweat either, and it sounds good romping up and down the grades. And if you think the new full-size three-row Wagoneer is a glorified minivan, <laughs> nope, it's a Jeep after all, and it easily chews through the hardest section. Let's go do the hard course. There's no line over here. Okay. Same goes for the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L, which also has three rows, but not quite as much room. And this one has air suspension. Yes. Quadra lift, get about four inches of travel from all the way up to all the way down. We're in off-road two, which gives us about two additional inches of ground clearance. I like the uh, gauge cluster. A lot, if not most of Grand Cherokees will be sold as family vehicles, and it's doubtful daycare pickup duties will involve commuting on stuff like this. Ford's Bronco has a GOAT mode dial, an acronym for go over any type of terrain, which makes it really easy to select the right program for crossing any kind of surface. Super simple to use. The Ford, which is comfortable on road, gives up nothing when it comes to off-road performance. The trick is finding one to buy. All right, scoring is all done. And the overall winner of Mudfest 2021 is... The 2021 Northwest Outdoor Activity Vehicle of the Year is the 2022 Genesis GV70 All-Wheel Drive Sport Prestige. For its blend of luxury interior and its comfortable but sporty ride, it's a very well done vehicle. And the runner-up is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz Limited All-Wheel Drive, which won in the pickup segment even though the company insists isn't a pickup. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a pickup. Again, it's not just about off-road prowess. It's never about one thing. This is about the total package and how well the vehicle delivers when it comes to its intended mission. That's how the 18 automotive writers on hand feel about this year's candidates. But only you can tell if a vehicle is right for you. So take our results as a strong suggestion and get out there and test drive. And if the dealerships let you do stuff like this, well, good on them.
Special thanks to the Northwest Automotive Press Association members for putting this event on. It takes a lot of work. And the Ridge Motorsports Park in Shelton, Washington did a fantastic job of hosting us and modifying the off-road sections. Kudos to the team. I always leave you with a fun fact. This time it's the graphic on the Tacoma TRD Pro. Look close and you'll see it's a topography map. Any guesses what or where it is? According to the Toyota rep on hand, it's Tacoma, Washington, 35 miles south of Seattle. There's a very good automotive museum there, LeMay, America's Car Museum. Check it out the next time you're in the Pacific Northwest. I'm finding out that masks aren't just for COVID. It's so dusty out here. I'm not getting tons of grit in my lungs. It's kind of nice to have one of these. Time for me to shower off all of that dust that seems to be in every crevice of my body and even in my teeth. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. Every Tuesday, I post a very thorough review and do my best to keep it succinct, to not waste your time. And if you're buying a new car, truck, or SUV, I will point out that I have a quote service that helps you get information quickly and free invoice pricing. It's at quotes.driven.ws. Use my service or cars.com or any other company. I don't care. It's tough to buy a vehicle these days with the chip shortage and the pandemic. You need every advantage that you can get. And if I haven't made myself perfectly clear, test drive as many vehicles as you can so you end up with the vehicle that's best for you. All right, I'm out of here. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.